update. I found my 28 female sisters, 41 female, mommy blog and I don't know what to do. Original post. I've been sitting on this all day and would really love some help here. My older sister June has been living with me, my husband Daniel, 39 male, and our daughter Leah, one and a half year old female, since before Leah was born. She had to move in with us around March 2019 because she lost her job after a fight with her boss and couldn't find new work in her field as there are not many openings in our area. She'd been living with her long-term boyfriend before that but they'd gotten into an argument of some sort. I don't know the details and he ended up kicking her out. She'd had nowhere to go since we didn't have any family nearby. So I talked with Daniel and asked if she could stay with us until she got back on her feet. She could help me around the house since I was pregnant at a time. My husband works long hours and didn't like the idea of me being home alone, especially while pregnant so agreed saying it was a good idea. June had been very thankful for the place to stay and was a great help around the house. And an even bigger help after Leah was born. I still did slash do the bulk of the childcare with Daniel right there to help when he's home. But it's nice to have someone else at home during the day to share the workload with. And Leah loves her Aunt Junie. The problem came today when I was looking up matching mommy and baby princess dresses, since I was hoping for Lee and I to be matching queen and princess for Halloween this year. Yes, I'm one of those people who plans costumes way ahead. Well, I got sucked down the mommy blog rabbit hole and spent almost an hour looking through blogs and stuff until I saw a familiar kitchen. It was familiar because it was my kitchen. I know, because I decorated my kitchen myself and it's a rustic sort of country theme. And I have three antique copper jello molds my grandma gave me hanging on the wall next to the fridge. Plus, I could see the treat bell I'd made for our kitty hanging on the fridge handle. She rings it when she wants a treat slash attention. I clicked on the picture and it took me to a mommy blog run by mommy with a name super similar to mine. The more I scrolled through the blog, the more disturbed I got. She had pictures of herself up in my house like it was hers. In one, she was even wearing one of my blouses. Pictures of her and Leah all tagged mommy and daughter. And even a couple pictures of her, Leah and Daniel that I recognized. I'd been in the photos but she'd apparently cropped me out of them. What do I do? How the hell do I even broach this? Hey sis, what's up with this blog of yours? Why are you pretending to be me? Why are you saying you're my daughter's mother? When did you have time to wear my clothes and post for pictures with my child? What the heck is going on? I put down all the info I could think of in my scrambled state right now. I don't think I missed anything. Any solid advice would be stellar. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Oddly enough, I've been in a similar situation. My younger sister was signing up as me on social media, doing in-depth searches for information about me, registered for my high school reunion, and the last straw used her job at a financial institution to dig into my account and offer unsolicited financial advice. I found out when I couldn't access the group for the reunion until I had a friend check it out and I was already in there, posting pictures and sending messages. I went with a nuclear option. I called her up and told her that she had to stop. At first, she denied any wrongdoing but I had all the information right there in front of me. In the end, I told her that she had two options stay out of my business and delete all the online profiles or I'd call her employer and never speak with her again. She confessed to the non-creepy portions of it and swore she wouldn't access my information again. Suddenly, the social media accounts were gone. Then she was fired for using her position to access accounts without reason in an unrelated case. So that sorted itself out. I was happy I called her out. It made healing easier. I had very little contact with her for a few years but eventually time heal all wounds. I still don't trust her because these types of identity theft are truly strange. It shows you that they have no boundaries regarding you. That's really messed up. Did she ever explain why she faked being you? I can't wrap my head around wanting to lie about being someone you know it or close with. She must have some mental issues going on, depression or even some kind of psychotic episode. I don't think that should affect your reaction though, except maybe to suggest she sees a therapist. Whatever is going on for her is hurting you and you need to protect yourself, your husband and your baby is a priority. Maybe if you have other family, you can ask them to support her in some way. Living in your house for free whilst lying to your face? That's enough to warrant telling her to stay elsewhere minimum. Photos of your child online without your permission? 
This is risky at best and seriously dangerous at worst. Pretending to be married to your husband and to be your baby's mother online? She's lying to you, your husband, your child and all her followers. And potentially monetizing slash building a career using your life and resources. Yeah, I think you need to tell your husband and ask her to leave together. She's putting your child at risk, if nothing else. Reading all of this is honestly making me feel sick with worry. Plus, those are just the concrete, non-emotional things. I can only imagine how violating it must feel. Someone spoofed my Instagram earlier this year. They grabbed several of my photos and tried to add people I knew. It was honestly unsettling, and I felt weird and kind of violated for a while. This is so much worse. Her home? Her child? Her identity? They make Lifetime movies about this stuff. Speak to your husband before you speak to her. You should put up a united front, and you want this to be a consistent message. She's massively crossed so many lines. It's time for Aunt Junie to move out, and this blog to be deleted. This really sounds like a horror film. You're not the only person telling me this whole situation screams horror movie. And that's freaking me out a little, not gonna lie. Now for the update. Well, the last almost a year has been a lot to process and work through. But a bunch of you nice readers have been begging me for an update. Though I don't want to do one until things calm down. But now things have settled enough for me to do so, so here I am. This is a super long one, so please bear with me. To start, June is no longer living with me and my family. First off, I sat Daniel down the next day and told him everything. I showed him the blog, and he was incredibly disturbed by it and upset too. He didn't like how many photos of Leah were up online without our knowledge. We don't post many pictures of her, and the ones we do are on our Facebook which are private. He was worried if June was mentally okay, because this was nuts to him, and I said I wasn't sure but I was worried about her too. We agreed we needed to talk to her ASAP. So he took Leah to his parents' house to stay the night before coming back home. Then I contacted our parents for a video call and told them about June's blog I found. I felt like they needed to know what was going on. Our mom was shocked, but our dad didn't believe it, so I sent them a link to the blog. They were quiet while they looked through it, and I talked to them about how we, Daniel and I, were understandably weirded out and concerned for June. Out of them both, Dad looked the most disappointed, while Mom just looked stunned. I told them June couldn't stay here anymore because of this, but we didn't want her out on the street, and they said she could come stay with them. They wanted to be there on call while we confronted June, but I said all of us together would probably make her feel like she was being attacked. So I said we'd call them afterwards, but due to confronting alone. But they'd probably have to help her move her stuff afterwards. Then after hanging up with them, I made sure I had my laptop there half shut with the blog open in case she tried to deny it. And I'd screenshotted slash recorded countless pages of the blog in case she tried deleting to rug sweep, like some people warned me she might do, which ended up being a good idea. When June sat down, she asked what was wrong, and I asked her if she had anything she'd like to come clean to us about. She's still my big sister, and I love her, so I wanted to give her a chance to own up to this on her own. But sadly, she said no, so I told her I found her mommy blog. She was silent before saying she didn't know what I was talking about, so I opened my laptop and showed her the blog. She still tried to deny it and said it wasn't okay that I was blaming her for this, when we didn't even know if it was her doing it. She said she'd never even seen this thing before, the blog, nor ever been to the site it was on. Danielle told her to get her laptop and they'd start typing in the blog URL, and if no shortcuts appear, then she was telling the truth that she'd never been on a site. But if one did come up, well, she was lying. She said we were being ridiculous, but I insisted she get her laptop and just prove us wrong. If we were wrong, then we'd apologize. She hemmed and hawed for a bit, before reluctantly getting her laptop. I noticed she was gripping it really tight, and after she opened it and signed in, I guess she realized she was backed into a corner, so she just broke down into loud sobs. She started babbling out apologies. And I asked her why she did this. Why even fake being me and starting a blog? I asked if it was for money or something, and she said no. So I asked her to please explain to me why this was a thing she felt the need to do. She explained that she did it to feel happy, and that she started it a little while after moving in with us. She said it wasn't fair that I had it all, while she was old and unwanted. I told her she wasn't old or unwanted. We love her, and so do our parents, and so does the rest of her friends and family. 
She got angry and said it wasn't the same. And there was no way for me to understand what she's going through because I was everyone's favorite. I didn't know what she was talking about and said I wasn't everyone's favorite. And that's when she exploded and said I was a blind a-hole if I didn't see how everyone in our lives always prefers me over her. She claimed everyone loved me more and I always got what I wanted no matter what. And I'll admit hearing that set me off. I told her that was actually not true. She was the oldest and if we're being honest she always got what she wanted before me, especially from our dad. I reminded her that he's bought her three cars over her adult life, a $2,000 laptop when she started college, and even paid off her first set of student loans for her. Meanwhile, he never did any of that for me. I didn't get to attend college because I didn't have the money and didn't want loans because I wasn't sure I'd be able to pay them back on time. The closest I got to what she got was when our dad offered to sell me his old car for cheap and gave me his old laptop after he upgraded with a brand new one. I said I loved her, but told her she had to see how delusional she was being if she thought I was somehow the favorite. I'll admit this was a sore spot for me. We got a little heated and argued back and forth, so I told her she needed to pack her things because she couldn't stay here anymore. My trust in her was severely damaged, and I didn't think her living with us any longer would be good for anyone. That's when she started bawling and begging me not to kick her out onto the streets. I told her she wasn't going onto the streets, and she could just go stay with our parents. They live a couple hours away, so it's not like she was going to be homeless. She kept crying and said she deletes the blog if we let her stay. I refused and said she needed to go to therapy and not stay here. While we were talking, her trying to compromise at me rejecting it, she opened a blog and began deleting everything. She kept repeating through tears, I'll delete it, I'll delete it, I'll get rid of everything and won't post anything else, as if to convince me to take back my decision. I made it clear through all of this that she was not staying here anymore no matter what she did. Once she deleted it, she said we were all good now, it's gone. But I told her it didn't matter, she wasn't staying here. That's when she got angry and said, But I deleted it, there's no problem now. Like deleting it made it not happen. We told her to get ready because our parents were on their way to pick her up and that they knew the situation. That caused her to start really flipping out. She was furious that I told our parents about the blog and said she wouldn't be able to look at our parents now. Things got messy and police were called by a neighbor because of just how loudly she was screaming. The cops arrived before our parents and she almost got taken into custody for being too aggressive and not settling down when the officer told her to calm herself the first time. So we had two cops there while she packed her stuff up. And then our parents arrived and it was just a very tense affair. I told her I loved her as she was leaving, but she practically spat at me that she hated me. That hurt a lot, but I tried not to take it to heart. A few months passed and our mom kept me updated on how June was doing. Our parents said she needed to go to therapy. It was a condition of them letting her stay there. She started going and seems to be doing a lot better, but she still won't talk to me. Mom says she looks sad a lot, but she also sounds remorseful when they talk about me slash my family. So I think the therapy is helping her come to terms with how not okay what she did was. And a couple months ago, she finally got in contact with me, called and apologized for what she did, how she'd acted and for saying she hated me. Talking with her felt nice. She sounded sad but happy too. Much happier than she had when living with my family. Those who said she made a blog to cope were right. It turns out June was in a really not good place mentally after the breakup and being let go from her job, way more than she'd been letting on to anyone. She also told me she'd been on medication for anxiety and depression before slash during when she dated her ex, but she'd shamed her for it. And eventually he convinced her she didn't need them with him in her life, which was wrong. Turns out the argument that ended their relationship was him being mad at her for being such a downer and making him sad. Yeah. So after seeing her therapist, she was put back on them and is doing much better, she says. So things didn't end all happy sunshine, but they didn't end as scarily as some people said they might. Which is more than good in my book. Thank you everyone for all your advice. It really helped. What's sad is that, with so many mommy and daughter blogs out there, an auntie and niece blog would be a nice spin. And who knows, would have gotten pretty big. With your consent first, of course. It wouldn't have worked in the slightest. She didn't want to be part of Opie's life. She wanted to have what Opie had. 
It was the lack of love and family and a home with all the connotations included that drove her to this, not lack of something she can orbit. Wow, what a roller coaster. May I congratulate you, Opie? Despite having no prior experience in such circumstances, you handled your situation expertly. You were direct with her, and you handled the subject in such a way that she wouldn't feel attacked or threatened. So important. You involved everyone who needed to be involved before engaging her and covered your bases. Great job. I feel so sad for your sister, but definitely glad to hear she's finally getting the help that she needs. It sounds like you both are in a better place. Bittersweet though it may be, for the moment. Thank you for the update. It's always so tragic to see how people get because they are forced or bullied into not taking their medications, since most times it causes them to snap. While June definitely had things to work on about herself, especially with acting as though Leah was her daughter and how she resented Opie, the ex was in a hole for convincing her to go off her meds and then blame her for her brain chemistry. X has the same vibes as the girls who take their roommates' medicines and either throw them away because it's better for their health or out of spite. There are two stories that have roommates destroying meds, and the last one is about a roommate doing it to spite that OP, although I cannot remember why. It's concerning the number of people who think mental illness can just be wished away. I've read the stories you're referring to, or similar ones, and it's terrifying to think that people can be so willfully ignorant of others' pain and so assured that they know best. Plus, suddenly stopping some antidepressants can really mess you up. Even tapering down can be unpleasant. June was 13 when Opie was born, so this you were the favorite mentality may come from the baby's receiving baby attention and I'm not, so baby's favorite. I'm also now wondering how much her depression played into it. Like June got a car from her dad. I wonder if he just didn't want to see her sad so thought it might help? But June's depression